I'll read from uh, Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 1, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in uh, the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said uh, unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached, unto, uh, preached to them. And blessed or happy is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, this is John the Baptist, What went ye out into the wilderness to see, a reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see, a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see, a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily or truly I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, that's tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe well unto thee, Chorazin, woe well unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be um, more tolerable, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Zidon at the day of judgment than for you. And now Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. And we know that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of sodomy, that which is so rife in the world that we live in now. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save or except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son shall reveal him. Come unto me. This is the words of the Lord Jesus. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I wonder, do you find the burden of sin heavy, weighing heavy upon your soul? 
You know, this is what we've got to understand, that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to take the burden of sin away. In fact, he wants to forgive you of all of your sins. Now, how can he do that? Only through his once-for-all sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. You see, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He shed his precious blood upon the cross that you and I could be forgiven. You and I have to realize that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. That's what repentance is. It's a change of mind. Simply come to God and agree with him that you are a sinner. Just admit that fact before the God of heaven and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As I said, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to take the burden of your sin away. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins. And the only way he can do that is through that once-for-all sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary, and the precious blood that was shed upon that cross, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Moving on now to Matthew chapter 12. At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger, in other words they were hungry, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they say, said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple, meaning himself. The Lord Jesus Christ is far greater than the temple itself. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, he would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, or from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him, how they might destroy the Lord Jesus Christ for healing on the Sabbath day. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence or from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. I wonder, have you trusted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you a child of God? The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
Then was brought unto him one possessed with a demon, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out demons, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. And Jesus uh, knew their thoughts and said unto them, Note that, Jesus knew their thoughts. He didn't have to hear them say anything. And the Lord Jesus Christ knows our thoughts are far off. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to hear our words. He knows our minds. He knows what we're thinking at any given time. And this should really be concerning. Be concerning because, you know, I wonder how many sinful thoughts we've had today, during this day. And that should really be, make us a bit concerned concerning our sin. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out demons, in other words, by the power of the devil, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore shall, uh, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, um, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word uh, against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Uh, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words uh, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees uh, answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here, meaning himself. The Lord Jesus Christ is far greater than Jonah. That great preacher in the Old Testament, when he went through that city of Nineveh, he preached, and the whole city was saved. Praise the Lord for the salvation of the whole of the city of Nineveh. What about you? Are you saved? Are you a child of God? Are you going to heaven? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God wants you to enter through the door. The Lord Jesus Christ is the door. He said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The Lord Jesus Christ can be your saviour tonight. He'll either be your saviour or he'll have to be your judge. What will it be for you? Your eternal destiny depends on what you do 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be saved. Come in repentance toward God. As I've said, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Again, he's speaking about himself. This is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence or from where I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself uh, seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet uh, talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and my brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Question is, are you saved? Are you a child of God? The only way to be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the word of God says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must be saved, otherwise you remain in a lost condition, going down to hell because your sins are taking you down there. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified upon the cross. I'll say again, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour. He desires to save your soul from a long lost eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Have you believed? in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? Yes, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening.